The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari, and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down to turn one at this 2.9 mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. I'm joined again today by none other than Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between the races. You've been both a test driver and a race driver. What differences are there in the way you approach those roles? Interesting question, Crofty. They're two very different mindsets. I mean, when I tested for BAR, we had full in-season testing where, per driver, you'd cover up to 15,000 kilometers per season. And in that role, it was more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as you could, so that that data could be analyzed in the most consistent way. When you're lining up on the grid for a race, however, your frame of mind's all about what you can get out of the situation on that day, and the car's the tool to help you achieve what you want. You still want to focus on setup, of course, but it's more about the here and now, getting yourself as far up the field as possible, and less about development work for the future. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Gasly, Sainz, Valtteri Bottas and Perez, Ricardo, Stroll, Giovinazzi and George Russell, Ocon, Vettel, Moore and Joe. Norris, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Sonoda, Nicholas Latifi and Mick Schumacher, Mazepin and Nobuharu Matsushita. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish.
That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. A real team effort which has paid off in spades. A great victory here at the Spanish Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. That lead at the top of the table has shrunk somewhat today. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Moore. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Ferrari continued to extend the gap at the top of the table. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined it. have your take on it. How do you feel after your teammates' victory? Are you happy for them or do you wish it were you? Your teammate is up on the podium today. This is a great thing for the team, isn't it? You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You left a lot of paint on the walls today. Were you struggling for grip or did you just misjudge some corners? Appreciate your time. <laughs>